What's going on? Welcome back to Tap That Auto. It's your boy, Dirty Boy. Damn, I can barely see the damn lens. Alright, we got a 2001 Ford F-150. Uh, guy traded another truck. This is Carson. He traded a uh, uh, kind of a pickup dump truck type of deal for this. And uh, I think the guy kind of screwed him. Well, not think the guy kind of screwed him, the guy screwed him. It has transmission problems right now. It's not good. And, uh, for some reason it's missing really badly. So we're going to find out what's going on with Do a little bit of compression testing and then we're going to go from there. This thing is burning super rich. Super, super. Taking these out with that kind of a reaction, huh? Well, besides this first one on the side. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bad news, dude.
I just came off. Oh no, I unplugged it. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say that's was on there. Yeah, no, I unplugged it. This was all coated. Had to fucking take pliers and just break it apart. I finally got it all the way undone. Mikey's falling off, so I just leave it off. <laughs> <laughs> this, it just happened down the road, so I'm like, really? Down the road, next thing you know, drop.
The only thing I can understand is the fucking wrenches that's running. It's not I would no think it would be an O2 sensor problem. It's not bringing up any codes. It's not bringing up no damn codes. Mike, look at these plugs that we just put in last night. Oh, they burning rich. rich. Huh? Hey. Yeah, we just did the tune up on this last night. But it's not throwing no engine codes. I would think that it would be an O2 sensor to make it probably run as rich as it's doing. But it's not having no O2 sensor codes. Nothing. And when I tested for compression, there's hardly any compression. Number one fucking cylinder had zero. And when you can hook your thumb up over the fucking hole, yeah. and it can sit there and turn it, and the fucking your thumb will pop off. Did on number two cylinder, but didn't on number or number three cylinder, but didn't on number one. definitely have a bad myth that's really underpowered and there's no checking <laughs> this is going to be one of them deals man where as a mechanic profession I would tell your grandmother not to sink any more money in this thing scrap it. I'd try to scrap it or see if you can't sell it for like two or three hundred bucks if oh, you're only going to get a hundred fifty out of this fucking every scrap it punk ass kid uh, because the thing of it is, is since this thing's like, it doesn't have any check engine codes, where the hell do we start? I mean, the first thing I would start is replacing all the O2 sensors. But you're looking at probably somewhere around $300 into that, that, and you don't know if it's, I mean, I, I could not guarantee it's going to fix it. Um, there's nothing telling me where to go. Um, I just don't see how um, it's got, shows up one peely ass transmission code but doesn't show up anything with the motor um, and then again you know it could be the o2 sensors it could be the computer it could be so much shit it's unreal on this thing um, but she's already got around 300 bucks into it just doing the the tune up and the oil change and shit like that and that could would have ripped this motor if nobody did the proper maintenance on here so that's what could uh, could have ruined this motor is because of that shit. And with that number one cylinder over here not having hardly any compression on that fucker, um, I would yeah I would consider stuff like that, uh, babying it back to the house and stuff like that. And there ain't really no babying to this. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, either it's, you're to the halfway to the floor or you're not going nowhere. So go ahead and put the spark plug back in it. I'm going to check one more thing and stuff like that once we get it started. But with this thing not showing me any codes or anything with the motor, I mean, it's... I mean, I don't care if you have a $1,000 scanner. I mean, it's yeah. showing no codes. It so didn't show any codes on my front scanner either. Yeah. He had that snap on him. He's like, Dude, I don't know. Yeah, so if a snap... He told me it's probably computer, and I'm like, 
He hard erased it, sent it all back to the factory. See, that's the thing. As he soon as I did it, it. Well, but as soon as he did it, though, I left the yard. He went up to Traverse City. Not even five miles down the road, it started doing it again. Yeah. So I know it didn't completely reset it. So there's something going on yeah, electrical, yeah. and I'm not going to deal with this. Yeah, go ahead and plug it in. I checked a couple more things with the, the computer and everything. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's pretty much a lost cause. When a vehicle, especially these newer ones, like, you know, back in the day when it was all carbureted, shit was, you know, oh, fairly easy and stuff. You <laughs> can actually pinpoint what's wrong with it. But when you have six injectors, 402 sensors, and no telling how many fucking wires on this thing, it's really hard to determine what's wrong with it. And like, you say it's your buddy scanner, he had a fucking snap-on scanner, and he couldn't figure out nothing no. inside that one either, so. And he, we ran it all the way back from Travers on the scanner, and it was not, it was showing normal RPM rate and everything, showing it was running right. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I don't know if the motor's hooked up to the scanner or disconnected. I mean, it might be. You never know. I mean, one thing about it is the guy knew that this thing was a hunk of shit. I mean, that's why he traded you. That's why he trailered it to your house and not drove it. I mean... I asked him to trailer it, though. He told me he would drive it. Yeah, but he was probably relieved when you said trailer it. <laughs> so, guys, lesson learned. Don't, Don't trust fun. nobody that's selling you a fucking car. Take it to a professional mechanic and have them check it out so you don't get fucked. A 20 year old, can't really blame them and stuff like that. I say fuck you to the guy that took advantage of a 20 year old kid. You're a dumb motherfucker. If you had any morals inside you, you would know who you are and you would bring that damn dump truck back to this kid and take this fucking shit back home. You're a fucking loser. I hope you love that. Now I can see if he was in his late 30s or in his late 20s, early 30s, you know, upwards of around there, then, you know, he should know better. But being 20 years old, you took advantage of this kid and you knew it. But guys, you know what they say, karma karma is a bitch. He will get his. Motor and transmission. Garbage. Uh, call the guy. You can see if he oh, had. 
already tried? Nope. Text him in the morning, I said, hey, I'm back to put a motor and chain in this truck. I'm not too fucking happy. Make sure you back or anything? Nope. Yeah, he knew he fucked it. So, I just get it back to the house, man. I throw 600 bucks on the windshield. Just fucking, probably take the first four or five hundred dollars if you get that. Count it as a loss. Okay, Three hundred bucks for it. Let's see. Let's see. If you put it on right now, I put it on for I put it on for six hundred. Put the fucking ad. It's got motor and transmission problems. Be great for dog body. The ones I got These are 31s, points. I believe. For the next step down.
All right, your plug done.
Alright guys, we're going to be done with this one. Still no codes in it, stuff like that. The only thing we got is that little pigeon ass uh, transmission code. Really ain't nothing. Ain't making the motor miss. But really nothing else. Um, still got really low compression on cylinder one, uh, three and four. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to take it for a drive and stuff like that. And remember guys, lesson learned. When you're buying a vehicle, take it to somebody that knows more than you to have them check it out before you go in with the deal. And whoever you was, dude, you can go suck a damn egg. Alright guys, I'll catch you on the flip side. Later.